one from regulatory, um, I can't read the full name, it's not appearing, but it says um, now Indian uh, pharmacopoeia is much stricter like U USPA or BP and recognized by several countries. Does New Zealand recognize or approve or allow import pharma products of Indian pharmacopoeia standard in New Zealand? It is not kindly looked into this matter. Yeah, again, that's that's more of a, a, a MedSafe question um, because really they, they're the ones that look at all the regulatory. Um, so I, I can't really answer that one. But I mean, certainly we import a huge amount of product from India. So I, you know, whatever the regulatory requirements can't be too much of a barrier because so many of our generic products do come from India. So... There's another question from Akansha saying, can a merchant exporter apply for tenders and subsequently hold the registration? You have to have, an, at the moment, you have to have a New Zealand sponsor. So, in fact, most of the companies we deal with um, have a New Zealand uh, distributor or wholesaler that they work with. Uh, that's a requirement from MedSafe that there has to be a sponsor in the, in the country. So that helps. But what we found is that although we had a relationship with the sponsor, we didn't necessarily have the relationship with the supplier. And I think over the last year, we found that we've been building up more relationships directly. But, yeah, you have to have a, a sponsor in New Zealand. And I know a lot of the companies that come into New Zealand have got good relationships with, with the big generic companies in New Zealand. Sure. Um, just, um, I don't know if um, the High Commissioner is there. Um, there's a... Another question that has come up is uh, when is the next tender expected, Sarah? Um, so the the tender will go out at the beginning of November. Okay. Um. So the draft tender will have gone out in August. So that if you, you go onto the website, you'll see the draft tender. That will give you a good idea of what products are in that. And then the final tender will usually go out the first week in November. Sure. Um, there's another one that's come through, Sarah, and I'll read it for the benefit of others, is um, that they manufacture some scientific things in the <laughs> GMP facility. Uh, you can um, some report. Yes. The yeah. answer is easy. The answer is yes. <laughs> it does fall under us, yeah. Okay, so that... Yeah. So uh, all those products um, would, would fall under our... Uh, and again, we... That might not necessarily be in the tender, but we did run a competitive process um, for those medicines. Um, so, again, that would cycle around every couple of years that we would issue um, another request for proposals for those medicines. So, yeah, that, that does come under us. Um, if Ude is there, Ude, I've got a question for you. Um, you mentioned that um, India, uh, New Zealand's the fourth largest uh, for your uh, for, for the drugs that you uh, export to New Zealand. Um, Gaurav, is Uday there? Yeah, Uday is there. Yes, I'm, I'm there. I'm yeah, there. Yeah, sure. So what, what's your um, future thing for the, your members, for the pharma in India? How do you see this relationship uh, booming, uh, especially post-COVID? Um, yeah, how do you uh, see the generic things um, working with Sarah and, and with MedSafe? Is it from my Indian friends or the New Zealand friends? Pardon? Uh, the, the question is from my Indian friends, uh, Indian registered delegates, or from uh, uh, New Zealand friends? It's, it's from, put it, as, put it both ways. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, my, my, my only point is that, you know, the, uh, our 30% of our exports are going to uh, U.S., and 17% uh, to Europe. So these countries are regularly purchasing from Europe, uh, India uh, due to the cost factor. And India is capable of uh, producing quality drugs at a very affordable price. So New Zealand market is almost 905 million. So in that, our share is only 60, 65 million. So in this, uh, Sarah can also seriously think about it that, you know, if, if, uh, the procurement agencies like Farmac will look into the prices and uh, we have highest number of uh, USFDA approved facilities as well as EU GMP uh, um, facility. 
so that if if farmac uh, recognizes or uh, allow the indian companies who have these global accreditations of stringent regulatory agencies so that is that is going to help not only the farmac as well as uh, the indian uh, pharmaceutical exporters so that will reduce the expense healthcare expenses of uh, in new zealand of course uh, the 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 financial condition particularly globally is not very healthy every country is facing serious problems due to this pandemic mm. so the uh, if if uh, the new zealand government or farmac uh, shifts from uh, the larger pair in uh, patent share to generic share that's going to help she was talking about the case study of simvastatin like that we have there are so many molecules uh, which are there so india can able to supply mm. at a very cost effective price then then this is my answer thank you very much uh- Sarah, would you like to have the right of reply? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly we. I mean, that's what you know. We, we're keen. We're always looking for more products, certainly yeah. when they come off patent um, to go generic. So I think there is huge potential, um, and that's why we we consult on our tender list um, because we are keen to get more suppliers into the country, more competition. As far as the regulation goes, I mean. often people will register in australia first and that does make it a lot easier to register in new zealand so you don't have to go through the whole process again so our regulator medsafe works very closely with the particularly the australian regulator regulators but also with the uk and and also the american regulators so they have pathways that can be much quicker if you're already registered in another country so you don't have to go through the whole process again for what is a relatively small market Yeah. Uh, Sunil, you can uh, let people uh, know that they can uh, talk now, and they can unmute if they have any question. Sure. Or part uh, of the discussion. Yeah. We've got a yeah. We've got an open session now. If anyone's uh, wanting to uh, ask a question to any of the panelists, uh, please unmute your button and feel free to ask. Yeah. Uday, Uday had uh, some point. He was saying something. Yeah. So. My my point is just now, Sarah was telling about uh, the Australian uh, example. So at least uh, Sarah can think about uh, the Indian companies who have a TGA, mm. the Australian FDA approved mm. facilities. They can think about uh, allowing uh, 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 those uh, uh, companies. Yeah, sure. Like I said, we work very closely, and 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 if, if it's TGA TGA registered, it makes it a lot easier to become registered in New Zealand. So that that, and obviously your market in Australia is a lot bigger. So often we find that people will go and get registered first in Australia, and then add on the New Zealand market afterwards. Well, there. I think on that note, you know, it might be helpful for Sarah and for Farmac if. Uh, your members provide who they are you know if they've got an australian license mm-hmm. you know so rather than going around and around you know in farmac here has a list of indian suppliers that already have the permit for australia and you know it it just makes life easy even mm-hmm. for farmac here in new zealand rather than going out on tender and doing it you know it might yeah, pay I, for you to someone in your office to collate that and forward it um you know to make it easier for uh, i think the key thing really though is is to work with the to find the sponsors here and there are a lot you know you've mentioned dr reddies and rex and mylan there's a lot of those companies that are in new zealand have those relationships and they can make it a lot easier because they understand how medsafe works and how farmat works so i think it's probably useful if i was to supply you with a list of the companies that we know that work with indian uh manufacturers that are that are in New Zealand that that's probably a much more useful contact for people to have yeah so sir so supply that list to the council yeah. then uh, yeah through yeah. council we can connect yeah. with the indian company yeah as uh, sunil i got i got your point uh, certainly i last lakshmi uh, she is the director of regulatory affairs to uh collect the data of the companies who have tga and what are the mm. products uh, are uh, registered and uh, so we will uh, in in the coming uh, few days uh, we'll share uh, 
that information with uh, Pharmac as well as Indian High Commission and uh, INJET basically. Sure, thank you. So what we'll do now is just open it up. If someone's got any question, you can unmute yourself and ask uh, in the next uh, minute or so. I have one uh, question for Sarah in the meantime. Uh, so Sarah, um, you know, uh, we know that India, uh, Indian companies have very good manufacturing capabilities. Mm -hmm in pharma sector. What is your view on, uh, you know, because New Zealand is very good in R&D and research. Um, is there a, um, a, you do see a big potential of, uh, you know, uh, the uh, formulas going there to India and uh, any types happening where uh, manufacturing can be done in India and a scale up can happen in India? For New, and for New Zealand uh, companies, uh, pharma companies who have, uh, you know, devised new medicines, but they're not able to scale up. Their oh, business. I see what you mean. Yes. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, I think the reality is there is so little manufacturing here. That's the only way that companies will be able to realistic do. It. I mean, I think the issue of coming into the market here, it's quite expensive to set up. It would make more sense to use contract manufacturing facilities. In, in, in And I, I know that's what people do. I think it, it's just the cost, the barrier to setting up here is just too much that people, it makes much more sense to go to India and use um, the facilities there because, the, you know, so many of them are accredited to a high standard. Yeah. Um, it it it's, it's would be prohibitive to try and do that in New Zealand, I think. Okay. So for the High Commissioner, I think, sir, make in India is a big opportunity for make yes. in India <laughs> in pharma sector. <laughs> I have uh, one question for uh, Mr. Bhaskar. Hello. Can you yes, go, on, go on, sir? Yeah. Go on, ask yes. yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Bhaskar, your council also deals with the medical devices that uh, Sarah spoke about. Uh, to, to some extent, uh, we are dealing with medical devices, but EEPC is the uh, Export Promotion Council, who is handling, but uh, uh, we can connect uh, them to the, or they, they have one organization who is representing all the medical devices manufacturers. So we can, we can connect them so, mm. and uh, we, we can facilitate. Yes. Um, Sunil, there was a question in the chat from Siva Gowda. You can take that if you want. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I can, I can see it. Yeah, it's about now. The, 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 as we've said, the over the counter and the nutraceuticals um, are, are not under Pharmac. Um, it really is medicines that are prescribed, um, therapeutic medicines. So, o, o, over the counter, we're, we're not involved in, in that market at all. So, Sarah, just to clear it up, uh, I think it'll be good to, you know, for the Indian. Um, um, you know, uh, manufacturers and all. So there's a difference between over-the-counter for New Zealand, right, and then what Pharmac prescribes is. And what Pharmac, uh, Pharmac uh, supplies is based on MedSafes. Pretty much, yeah. So anything that's a prescription medicine, so basically it tends to be stuff that's prescription only, that can only be, um, the patients can only access with a prescription yeah, because uh, in, I think uh, in India, it's a different world. Yeah, you, know, yeah, you, yeah. you, you can, can buy things more easily. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Part of, uh, again, part of MedSafe's regulation isn't just about the product um, quality. It's about the access, about what has to be on a prescription. So I think we can probably buy a lot less over the counter here than you can buy in India and, and other countries. You can go and you can't buy antibiotics over the counter here you have to go to your doctor to get it prescribed so that's probably where there's uh, our over-the-counter medicines are tend to be um quite you know the, the the things that would be maybe you might be able to buy in other countries but here you'd have to go to your doctor to get them sure so i think that that concept the difference. Uh, yeah is very different for yeah. our indian manufacturers um so okay any other question from the audience um, we have another 15 minutes to go only, and it's very difficult to get such an esteemed panel. So okay. <laughs> I think, um, Koshik, yeah, Dr. Koshik, Koshik, yes. yeah. 
Please. Yes, I, I just would like to know what is the rules and regulations for the Ayurvedic or herbal medicines? Um, well, as I said, they wouldn't um, they wouldn't come under our remit um, here. So they would be part of those products that you could sell over the counter. So the regulations are quite different for those that, uh, that they wouldn't um, necessarily be regulated by MedSafe. They wouldn't have to be funded by us. People would be able, if you can get them into the market here, people would just buy them themselves. So it wouldn't Thank have you. to go through our processes. So, so again, there's, that, another, there's an opportunity there. It's probably a bit easier. <laughs> is that same for homeopathic ones? Yes. Yeah. And they, they are quite popular here. So, again, that, that, that is another opportunity. Um, and it's probably an easier market to get into than the prescription market here. There's less barriers. Okay. Thank you on that. Any other questions? Anything in the chat? Yeah. Uh, Sudhir. Well, uh, I have a question. Uh, yeah, Sudhir, go carry on. Yeah, uh, good morning uh, to all. I'm Sudhir. Uh, I'm representing a company where we are uh, manufacturers of antiseptics and disinfectants range and one of the oldest, uh, largest manufacturing company in India. So as uh, uh, due to uh, COVID, which has emerged in uh, 2020 and people came to know about the hygienicity mm. of, uh, and precautions to be taken. So we are uh, one of the largest exporters to all over the globe. So I just wanted to know how is the regulations for this antiseptic and disinfectant? I'm not uh, categorically talking about hand sanitizer because that has been uh, produced now everywhere, you know, like mushrooms. Now <laughs> but we also have, but we also have them, but uh, with the uh, EN um, credentials, uh, as per the EN norms, you know, because uh, I'm also a pharmacist by profession. Mm, you know, many of the guidelines have come from WHO and CDC that what type of uh, hand sanitizer should be required. It is yes. not just an alcohol. What you add and uh, spoil your skin or cause dermatitis and those kind of uh, issues. So uh, I'm not talking about that, but overall in general about uh, disinfectants of uh, instruments or in some of the countries it is classified under medical device. Yes. So yeah, that, that's a good example of an area that does start to fit into our medical devices space. And there are there are regulations here around antiseptic and disinfectant. So um, a lot of them do have to be, we even had that with hand, set, hand sanitizers. We had obviously real issues with hand sanitizer here last year. And in fact, we treat them as a prescription medicine. So there was only certain ones that we could buy that were approved by MedSafe. Um, but that's certainly a good example where as we move more into that medical devices market, that's exactly the sort of products we'll be um, taking more responsibility for, particularly in the hospital uh, space as well. well. Obviously, there are a lot of those products used in hospitals. So uh, that is mainly, an area. Uh, Sarah, mainly I'm emphasizing about a high level instrument disinfectants, yes. where mainly for critical, semi-critical and non-critical instruments and also for what you can call it as a surface disinfectant where larger yeah. areas now as COVID uh, second wave, third wave has been reaching. Now hand sanitizers uh, has gone out of the way, you know, because now yes. we have to cover larger areas and we have more sophisticated uh, quaternary ammonium compounds, which can able to take care of those uh, pathogens and uh, make the people free, uh, safe and spread of infections could be controlled. That's what yeah. now the initial uh, priorities uh, there in the globe and that spread has to be uh, minimized and where you should use this uh, the surface disinfectants. So uh, do these products require registration in New Zealand? Uh, if you they want do. To? Yeah, at the moment they do um, because otherwise the market would be, the quality of the product so important. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that this is a question. Hand is this? Yeah, okay, you go ahead. But Parat, you got a question? Parat, you can uh, ask question directly. Yes, sir. You wanted to... Hello. Uh, yeah, yeah you want to ask a question? Yes, sir, we are interested to plant, uh, to have the plant, oh, okay, of Onsa GMP. So, like, if we have the New Zealand, so can you help me in that? 
in terms of the wellness product and the pharma product like if we uh, if we want to deal if we want to deal in the europe we need to have the eu gmp uh, plant okay in terms of the pharma and wellness product so if we are interested to develop uh, our product our wellness product and pharma product in the new zealand so can we have uh, that guidelines for that or yeah. any help from you you people you sir that would be that would be the again the medsafe would be responsible for that um so again i'd go to their website and that will give you a good idea of what their requirements are but it, if you've got registration in other countries if you got gmp for other countries that that often will will be good what what we will do is uh, i know samir is waiting to ask a question but i think uh, for uh, the people in india uh, we'll probably also arrange another online session with medsafe exactly. yeah i think uh, that would be a really good idea and then maybe yeah. later on both yeah. with medsafe and pharmac or what do you samir you've got a question Yeah, I was going to ask Sarah. You said now pharma will start dealing with medical devices. Uh, my question is, who's currently doing that? Who does all that work at the moment or in the past? It it, it was all very done by the hospitals individually. Um, so that was part of the problem that everybody was just doing their own thing. So what we're moving to is doing it on a much more, more national basis. So we will do it on behalf of the district health boards and the hospitals. So it will all again the suppliers will only have to deal with us like they do for medicines. Is there a starting date for that already? Set oh, up? we've started. Yeah, so we've been. That's where we've been doing the contracting. We've been doing that for about the last five years. So basically, that's all the products that are currently used in New Zealand. We're now contracting for them. Um, so then, what will happen then is any new products come to the market. That that will be done through us. So that that <coughs> that work is already well underway. and how do people find out about that will there be a tender coming out for yes, those yes this is all all exactly the same as for the medicine so all those um processes go up on that government tender uh, system and they're all on our website so if people they can sign up to get all our um emails if they're interested or they can go on to the get site so everything we do we we put out publicly there's no closed processes everything is open to to any supplier thank you thank you um i uh, i think um yeah we will there was just a question around midsafe i think um uh, we we will probably have to arrange for a meeting mm. with midsafe um look sarah on this note i really want to thank you for your time uh this evening you've been very informative and i think uh, it's great to have someone like this uh, of your caliber and you know and being the ceo of pharma you know <laughs> giving us um uh you know information around these things um so uh, thank you so much for your thank time you. and uh, i'm sure we'll uh, keep on uh, discussing mm. uh, things with you um now to give a word of thanks uh, i would like to invite uh, dr uh, vernichi shah senior vice president idma indian drug manufacturers association and director sag life sciences limited to deliver the closing remarks from the indian side dr shah thank you sunil uh, incidentally today happens also to be the birthday of the honorable indian prime minister mr narendra modi yes. and uh, we wish him uh, good luck and great health very recently uh, in an interaction with the uh, entrepreneurs he has set up uh, for a very uh aggressive target of uh, 400 billion dollars worth of merchandise exports for india in which the pharmaceutical industry has been set up with a target of almost 29 billion dollars and uh, this only shows the capability that this industry in india has in uh, in their ability to serve uh, with good quality affordable medicines to the globe and uh, i'm sure as the idma the indian drug manufacturers association that is the voice of uh, the indian pharmaceutical industry uh, we have a great role a bigger role to play uh, with agencies in new zealand to offer good quality medications at very affordable prices for their population uh, at the onset i would like to thank the indian new zealand business council for uh, organizing this event and bringing closer the indian and new zealand business community uh, thank you mr sunil handa for setting up the perspective of this meeting uh the the importance of today's meet 
has been amplified by the presence of uh, His Excellency Sri Muktesh Pradeshi Ji, the Honorable High Commissioner of India in New Zealand. Uh, thank you, sir, for your presence and for highlighting the statistics of the performance of the uh, Indian contribution to the globe in the fossil fuel industry, and also highlighting that out of the $1.5 billion of imports of medications in New Zealand, uh, India contributes about 85.8 million uh, only, which itself shows that there is a big uh, path to cover, there's a big ground to cover for the Indian industry, and uh, a lot can be done. Uh, as usual, a uh, thank uh, to Mr. Uday Baskar for uh, sh showcasing the Indian pharmaceutical industry's strength and performance. As he rightly said, uh, almost half of our exports goes to very emerged markets like US and Europe, which also gives a case for us to represent that uh, we can produce world's best medication at affordable prices. Uh, a big thank you for Ms. Sarah Fit, uh, the chief executive of Pharmac. You have very thankfully for us, you have clarified the doubts of uh, in the minds of the Indian integrators on a lot of issues, including the procurement procedures, the how uh, the medications are being imported and uh, you know, presented to the market, how the reimbursements are done and what could be the right path forward for the Indian pharmaceutical manufacturers who wish to explore the New Zealand market. Thank you, Madam, so very much for uh, you know a lot of uh, insights into the New Zealand market. Friends, uh, Madam, a small submission from the Indian pharmaceutical industry. Uh, I am told that the regulatory process uh, for entering New Zealand is close to 18 to 24 months. And uh, it's about 50,000 US dollars to uh, you know, register a product. Uh, if something can be done on your side to uh, interact with uh, MedSafe and try to reduce this, uh, this timeline, it would be really helpful. It would uh, you know, encourage a lot of Indian entrepreneurs to aggressively come to the uh, New Zealand market and offer their quality products to them. So, Madam, a small suggestion. Uh, of course, we'll also take up if there is a chance to interact with MedSafe in future. Uh, the current pandemic has brought out the importance of the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. And I thank uh, Madam Sarah for highlighting that her experience with the Indian suppliers has been very good. And there has been not a single incidence of uh, shortages of medications in New Zealand from the Indian suppliers. And I, from IDM, assure you that we'll be working more closely with the New Zealand authorities to offer our best. So thank you once again for having us here today. And on the side of IDMA, we assure you that we'll be, this is just a starting point. We'll continue forward in the journey to collaborate more with the New Zealand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Shah. Really appreciate those uh, kind words and insights on how, um, you know, pharmaceutical from India is looking at New Zealand and also to Sarah uh, for your uh, deliberation from New Zealand point of view. At the same time, I would like to also thank uh, His Excellency um, Uktesh Pradeshi, who's made himself available, having just landed yesterday uh, and uh, given, and not only that, driving this uh, from a very long time. Um, so thank you, sir, for your uh, contributions and for your passion. Um, I think it's just the beginning, but I think the beginning was when um, uh, Dr. Bhaskar and the team came uh, last time to New Zealand, um, you know, and it started something. And I think one of the things that we have got out of today is that um, probably as an action point uh, for Samir and for me and the team is to make sure that we arrange for uh, another session with um, uh, with uh, MedSafe uh, to have an opening of uh, understanding of how things work, you know, from a regulatory framework, et cetera. And then maybe as a follow-up, uh, you know, once the um, travel is uh, open, so uh, maybe for the Indian delegation to come and, uh, you know, we meet with both MedSafe and Pharmac and the industry over here <clears throat> and, uh, you know, and uh, have a good discussion on how we can help uh, New Zealand um, 
uh, cope up with the supply and demand thing. So thank you everyone. And also thank you to the chair of INZBC, Samir Handa for heading this and also to uh, Gaurav Gupta uh, in the background for arranging all the um, uh, IT side of it, uh, technology, which is very important. Otherwise we'll be going on mute and you know the camera might be on and we might be having a cup of tea in India or a glass of water here. So thank you everyone. You enjoy the lovely day and and uh, stay safe, um, and uh, we'll certainly catch up again. Good night. Good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay good night. Bye, everyone.